Hey guys, in today's video I will be showing you how to resolubilize barium from barium sulfate waste. Often you might use barium salts in a reaction to get rid of sulfate ions. This creates insoluble barium sulfate, which is quite useless on its own. However, I recommend keeping it, especially since barium salts may be difficult to acquire for the amateur chemist, as many places put strict regulations on these toxic substances. Normally, barium sulfate is insoluble in pretty much anything, except concentrated sulfuric acid, which can dissolve about 12% by weight. This isn't of any real use though, so we have to make a soluble salt for it to be useful again. This soluble form of barium salts is most often in the form of chloride or nitrate. There are two reactions we can do with the sulfate that yield a soluble salt. First, by just heating to about 1500 degrees it will give off sulfur dioxide and leave behind barium oxide. But these temperatures are not easy to achieve in the amateur lab, especially finding a reaction vessel that can withstand these temperatures would be difficult. The second way would be a thermochemical sulfate reduction. This is the industrial way of refining barium sulfate ore called barite. For this the sulfate ore is heated with carbon. This is then called a carbothermal reduction. However, this process is endothermic and I'm going to try the same reaction with different organic compounds as reducing agent to maybe find one that's exothermic and therefore easier to perform. First I'm going to do some small scale testing and later move on and try processing all of it. So to get started, here is some barium sulfate of different purities. They all are too dirty though and I'm going to clean them. We have to get rid of any soluble stuff beforehand, so that it doesn't get leached out along with the barium later. If your barium sulfate is clean enough, you can skip the following steps. First I heated the barium powder with the gas burner and blowtorch to get rid of any organics and elemental carbon that is present. If you have an electric furnace, I highly recommend just putting it in there for some time. But I only have a DIY version which can't sustain more than 500 degrees, which just doesn't cut it. After letting it cool down for a while, I put it all in a beaker and added some hydrochloric acid. I recommend going with a rather large beaker anytime you don't have pure reagents, because it might start to foam unexpectedly. I then started heating the beaker and added some peroxide, to really get rid of anything possible. In general, barium sulfate is not soluble in this solution. But since we already heated it, it is possible some of it has already been reduced into a soluble form. So I added some sulfate in the form of sodium bisulfate, which is cheaper and easier to get than sulfuric acid and will also make sure all barium stays precipitated. This also gives the advantage of not having to deal with barium containing wastewater, because the solubility is low enough that the supernate does not contain significant amounts of barium. I repeat this boiling with acid a few times and finish off with one last water washing. After that the remaining precipitate can be filtered and dried. The powder should now be clean enough to perform the high temperature reduction. I tried grinding it up some more, but that didn't seem to work that great. Next, I set up three beakers with 10 grams each of the now clean barium sulfate and added a 1.5 molar excess of carbon, oxalic acid and citric acid. My idea was, since the reduction reaction with carbon is endothermic, I might get better results by using lower entropy reducing agents that in theory would react exothermic with the sulfate. After mixing thoroughly, I one after the other put them in a small crucible and heated each for 5 minutes with some stirring. I kept it covered as much as possible, but the oxalic acid sublimed out before anything happened. The citric acid melted, which seemed to help with heat transfer, but still was not the exothermic reaction I was hoping for. My very first try with clean barium sulfate and carbon powder actually burned by itself. It was comparable to a nitrate sugar mixture and I have no explanation why this happened. Unfortunately, I could not reproduce it. But that got me thinking, how about mixing in some oxidizing agent and more excess carbon or even sugar, this could provide internal heating, maybe yielding better results. Only thing to keep in mind is sodium nitrate would leave soluble sodium which can crystallize with the barium later. 
so barium nitrate must be used. Fortunately, all additional barium is recovered. Maybe I will try this someday. Anyways, moving on, I added each sample to a beaker and poured in some hydrochloric acid. This step has to be done outside or in a fume hood, because a lot of hydrogen sulfide is released. It might be useful to perform this inside a gas generator apparatus to capture the evolved H2S and put it to use, or just neutralize it. Here you can see how even without heating a piece of lead acetate paper turns black by the gas. Interestingly, not with the sample where I used oxalic acid. This further indicates not having reacted in the first place. After boiling for a few minutes to make sure all the toxic hydrogen sulfide is gone, I went ahead and put in some more water not to not let the now formed barium chloride crystallize out. I let one cool down for a while, which already precipitated some crystals. That's however not what we want, at least not yet. First I had to filter off all the unreacted barium sulfate and leftover carbon. The filtrate was then boiled until the first crystals formed and then allowed to cool down. For this small scale test I decided to add some alcohol directly to the solution to make sure all of the barium chloride, which is insoluble in ethanol, crashed out. I also had some more solution from the first off-camera testing, including the one I mentioned that seemed to go all by itself, which I decided to also finish up now. After filtering them all, I then let it dry and wait out the final yield. Because of the short heating time, all of them were below 5%. The worst performing by far was the oxalic acid one, citric acid winning over carbon by a small amount. Nonetheless, I decided to use plain old carbon for the larger scale test. I gathered all the barium sulfate I had and found it to be 85 grams, but let's call it 80, since there probably is some excess carbon from the unreacted part of the tests in there. I again went with a 1.5 molar excess of carbon, but considering the final yield, I should have used more. Something like an empty paint or soup can works great as a crucible. Mine was missing the lid, so I used the steel lid from a glass jar. I punched some holes in the lid because it's always a bad idea to heat a closed system. After mixing the powders, I tied on the lid with some wire to keep it all together. Now you can just chuck this reaction vessel into a campfire, but I'm going to put it in the wood fireplace inside the house. I lit it up and came back after an hour to shake it up a little. I repeated this every 15 minutes for a total of 2 hours cooking time. I later realized I should have definitely left it in longer than that. After it had some time to cool down, I opened it and repeated the same steps as before, dissolving it in acid, add water, filter, then boil it down and filter off the crystals. All of this can be done with gravity filtration too. My filter actually ripped here, so I had to stop and filter it again.
For transferring the crystals, I decided to again use alcohol to not dissolve them by adding water. This worked great. All the iron which came off the crucible and gives everything a yellow color is also soluble in ethanol and just washes away. I let the crystals dry and of course decided to light the alcohol vapor in the filtration flask on fire. I then did this again, again and again. All of the wastewater and alcohol is treated with some source of sulfate ions to convert all the residual barium and make it safe to discard. The final yield is exactly 10 grams of nice clean crystals, which is a percentage yield of 12%. Not great, I know, but all of the stuff filtered out after treating with acid can be used to perform this reaction again. And with some tuning and longer heating time, it definitely is worth it if barium is a valuable chemical to you. Thank you all for watching, leave any suggestions in the comments and have a great day.